We are live, Ms. Allen. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this, this morning. With the permission of the directors present, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 1046. And we'll move. Uh, we don't have any uh, presentations or updates at this time. So we'll move with our proposed agenda and I'll ask Mr. Cooksey to come forward with his presentation or his update on the COVID-19 emergency measures. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, presenting a submission for our uh, operations, the extension of the COVID-19 emergency measures. Uh, just a, a quick update. Uh, so far, the state of Georgia uh, is 26% fully vaccinated. Um, as far as one dose, 36%. So that's up um, over what I presented or talked about last month. So it looks like we're heading in the right direction there. Uh, the FTA did uh, extend the mask mandate until September 13th uh, for all of uh, mass transit, that's bus, rail, uh, ferry, et cetera. So we are following suit in that direction. Uh, social distancing, no changes in reference to that uh, on the interior uh, of our vehicles uh, for our riding public. So again, just asking that we uh, stay, uh, stay sharp on this, stay vigilant and uh, continue our um, emergency measures as far as operations. And um, that, that's what I'd like to present. So I'm okay, any questions? Okay, are you planning to bring whatever changes you make to the board later for ratification? Uh, yes, if there are any changes then, you know, that impact this, uh, uh, then, you know, we would definitely present those coming for going forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Cooksey. We'll just uh, move forward with Brent Dice, who is our Chief Systems Development Officer with the renewal of the DOT shuttle. Good morning. I am excited to announce that the city of Savannah is just about ready to reinstate the DOT shuttle. Uh, the reinstatement contract is being sent to city council for a potential June restart. So we are psyched that we will be able to um, provide that service again and um, bring in some additional revenue. Uh, it includes an expansion to the Eastern Wharf. So um, that construction is finishing up now and um, phase, I don't remember which phase we're in uh, over there in the Eastern Wharf, but we'll be um, looping the downtown loop of the dot shuttle into the Eastern Wharf. So excited about that. And actually we're seeing additional expansion coming in the future. Uh, we have discussed um, how we can um, next extend the dot into the uh, west side of downtown. And then uh, hopefully next year, uh, the plan is to uh, loop it down into the Starling district. So super excited about the expansion there. And you have the, uh, contact in front of you. It would be uh, run at half capacity with the windows open at the request of the public health department and limited hours would be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. And so just wanted to bring that before you and show you that contract, get approval for that. I think Director Stone was asking a question, but we could not hear her. I'm not sure if she's, we've lost her in the connection? Um, uh, oh, oh, I got a question. Yeah. I just, I, Helen, I said that's great. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Did you just say that the dot is running into the Starland district? 
Not yet, but we have been uh, asked by the city to explore that option for it's, 2022. It's so there is that potential, yes. Oh, okay. That's a new route. Yeah, it would, it would extend the Forsyth loop. So if we were to do that, um, instead of uh, looping at the bottom of the park, I think it loops around Park Street currently, um, it would extend down maybe on, on Whitaker and uh, Drayton to uh, loop down into the Starling District. And when did y'all decide to do that? It's not a decision yet. It's just been a request from the city. And so we're exploring those options. Of, of course, that would be something that we would need to bring before the board for review and approval. But when did uh, the request come in? To, to extend it. Yes, we've been discussing it. Yes, um, when, when, since when? Like, when did you start? That I'm not sure. Um, I can go back and look at my records, but of course that would be something that the board would need to approve. Okay, I'd like to know when those discussions began. Okay. Please, thank you. No problem. Director Stone, did you have an additional question or comment? No, I was just saying that's good. Okay. Good. Director O'Dell, are, are you satisfied? Um, I do have one more question about the donation policy. Are y'all attaching that to a, a board meeting agenda yes. soon? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to discuss that right after this, after Brent. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. If there aren't any more questions of Brent, then I'll just move forward with the donation policy. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, um, staff, uh, just recent, we just recently realized that we do not have a donation policy in place. So I'd like to bring before the board and a policy that would allow CAT to make donations uh, available from its uh, surplus materials, equipments, um, revenue and non-revenue vehicles, also lost and found items that have been stored for a, a period of 60 to 90 days, and this would allow us to donate them to other agencies to be repurposed in the area. Um, this is in collaboration with our strategic goal to enhance existing relationships and develop new partnerships with the general public, the community groups, businesses, and other agencies. And I will, uh, I am asking that this be placed on the agenda for the board meeting for approval. I'm currently working on uh, uh, finalizing the policy itself, but that will be available to you. Okay, so you'll provide the policy before you ask us to vote on it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you're drafting it. That's why we don't have a copy now. That's correct. That's okay. correct. And okay. So and I just wanted to let you know that it will include buses, surplus buses, um, as well as non-revenue vehicles. And sometimes we have uh, bicycles that are left on the, bi on the uh, buses so we're, we're setting up the policy. As I said, we're drafting a policy that will address all of these and allow us to donate these surplus items. Okay, so let me ask you, um, as, while we're talking about buses, are we looking at purchasing smaller buses for the routes that have, so that we can optimize the usage of them? Because like we have big buses that aren't capacity. Yes, so maybe we get some smaller buses and send them on those routes so it doesn't <laughs> cost as much. And then we donate the bigger buses. Well, we are, we are looking at optimizing our performance on the routes and doing so um, with probably an on-demand vehicle. Uh, we are discussing the possibility of purchasing several smaller vans. I don't know if this is what you're thinking of, but they would be they would be used on some of the, the routes that are less efficient with the larger buses. Well, with the larger buses, they don't have one that's a size smaller than that. It just comes van or big bus. Now we have 40 foot buses in stock. We have 35 foot buses in stock currently. Oh, is 35 and 40 the that's the smallest they come? Not not for a, a bus, but um the on-demand, then you move into passenger vehicles, uh, passenger vans, uh, 
maybe 16 passenger vehicles, vans, things like that. So, so they don't have anything that's like a 20, 20, 25 passenger bus. They just I, got 35 and 35 feet and 40. Those are standard. I don't know about the 20 foot. I would have to check on that and let you know about that. But those are the standard bus sizes. And then they're larger than those are buses that are larger than that. But I don't yes, know. Yes, I've seen small. the ones that are, I've seen the ones that look like station wagons. They got an <laughs> extra, they got a little buggy in the back. I've seen those. Yes, yes. But what but I'm I wondering, can definitely do some research on that and let you know. Yeah, because you know, the the 45 foot. Sometimes we have, like Abercorn is always, can always use that route. Yes, ma'am. But maybe, you know, one of the smaller routes could use a 20 foot and it would be less expensive to operate a 20 foot versus a 45. Yes, ma'am. I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. Okay. But I don't know that 20 foot buses are available or smaller buses, but I that's what I'm wondering. If there's, yes, if there's one smaller, like if there's something, you know, between 16 passenger van and 50 passenger bus, like what's in the middle? Mm -hmm. Hello, I can jump, I can answer that. So there are, you have the 29 foot buses, which tend to be like your paratransit size. Um, you have, um, uh, you know, from there it goes down in size. Uh, there's a size uh, right below that that still requires a CDL. And then you get into the vehicles that do not. So there's a, a spectrum of different sizes depending on the types of services uh, you know that you're running uh, that you can kind of match the size of the fleet to uh, the type of service that you, you know, if you're attempting to run. So right, there are because, different we, because we've been looking at some routes and talking about maybe discontinuing the route, and maybe instead of discontinuing the route, we put a less expensive mode of transportation on the route because if somebody is using it then it's needed. That's right. And that's why we've been looking at the option of providing on-demand service for those routes. So that's something that we're discussing uh, in-house about the possibility of um, allowing them to uh, place on-demand buses or vehicles on those less used routes rather than uh, even considering the elimination of the route. Right. Or maybe just making it smaller or something. So that's what I'm asking. All right, yes, thank you. You're welcome. And I'll go right into the, the next agenda item, which is the governance calendar for fiscal year 2022. As you both know, this is a routine um, board approval for the first half of the fiscal budget, uh, which will be July through December. And you have a copy of it, I believe. I don't know if you have it before you, but it's, um, it lists the, the regular committee meetings on the second Tuesday, the governance meetings on the third Tuesday, and then the board meetings on the fourth Tuesdays for July through December of 2022. And it's just routine that, you, that the board always approves the governance calendar. Did you have a question, Director O'Dell? Okay, so you need a motion. We're not now. So for you committee. need a motion. No, ma'am, not for committee, but we are going to ask that this be placed on the consent agenda for the board meeting. We, we move to the consent agenda. Okay. Well, all of these items. That'll be fine with me. Okay. Okay. Are there, are there any questions specifically about that? And there is an item, uh, Director Odell, Director Stone, that has not been placed on the agenda for today. And it's in reference to the uh, security contract. As you will recall, last month, we asked that it be removed from the consent agenda because we had not vetted it through the legal process. So we have received um, the go ahead from legal and we would like to request, although it was omitted on this agenda, we would ask that it would be, be placed on the agenda for the regular board meeting. Everything's been worked out, all the questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
if we didn't want to move forward, we had it on the agenda for the last meeting, but we did not want to move forward since it had not been vetted through legal yet. But we have received the okay to proceed from legal and we would ask that it be placed on the agenda for the board meeting uh, on the 25th. Okay. Okay. Uh, and with your permission, we'll just uh, request it to be placed on the consent agenda. That's fine. Okay, if you're okay with that, Dr. Director O'Dell, we're good? Okay. Okay, then we'll move forward to the um, electric bus change order. Uh, our CFO, Stephanie Cutter, is gonna come forward because we realized um, that um, what came before the board initially for the purchase of the electric vehicles was not correct that there was an additional cost and Ms. Cutter will present that information to you. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Mrs. Ragland said, this is the change order for the electric bus. Um, upon delivery, uh, we noticed that the uh, unit costs of the bus were, came in higher than the original. Um, and there's a difference of a total of 214,000 $146, um, which exceeds the authority of the interim CFO. So we would like to move forward, uh, placing it on the agenda for board approval uh, to cover the increased costs. What, what precipitated the, the I mean, what caused, I'm sorry, the additional cost? I would assume, uh, Ms. Stone, is that originally it came before the board in 2018 uh, mm -hmm. under the uh, Virginia State Purchasing Contract that the unit cost per bus increased from that period of time to this period of time. And how many buses are there? Uh, five. So they increased forty thousand dollars each. About, yeah, roughly. about forty-two thousand eight hundred twenty-nine dollars each. I wonder why. And that's a pretty. That's a pretty significant jump. It is. We can do some uh, further follow-up. So I'm just. To, to, I mean, they didn't give. Yeah, I'd like to know why. Sure, I'll I'll go back and and research that. I mean, and I don't know. I don't know the actual. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We were just made, we were made aware of this um, about a week ago, that there was a difference in the cost after we were started receiving the buses, and we wanted to bring it before the board immediately to uh, make you aware of it as well. As Ms. Cutter says, um, we will do our due diligence in seeking the reasons why the increase and why such a significant increase as well. Did they, my we didn't have a contract and I mean, I guess we I'm just questioning back. how they could do that. If we piggybacked off of the Virginia State purchasing contract and um, obviously there were some changes within that contract that impacted the unit cost per bus. Did previous administration do that? I mean, I, I just can't imagine that they just out of nowhere didn't tell us, didn't talk to us, didn't have any communication with us at all. They just changed the price of the bus. And is it possible that we're just now finding out because previous administration knew before us? 
uh, Director Odell, um, I'll have to do some research uh, on that to be able to um, answer your question correctly. Um, okay, because it just seems it just seems odd. It does. You know, it I does. mean, it's, it's odd, and these people do business every day. But if they did business like that, I don't think they'd be in business very long. We I'm will definitely get back with you all. Great questions. Okay, yes. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> like I said, we just we were just uh, found out, or we were made aware of the situation. Uh, the current administration was just made aware of the situation, so we wanted to bring it to you immediately. We will go back, as as Ms. Cutter said, and um, uh, research and and provide answers to you for yes, the, by the board meeting. Because it's very important that if it's something that fell on the previous administration, that you say that and you let that be known so it doesn't look like you messed up or <laughs> didn't follow up. Well, it, it didn't happen under this current administration. I'll just say that. You might want to say that. Dude. <laughs> you might want to get that out there. Yes, it's important to kind of get that out there. But, but we are making all efforts to research the situation and report the, the situation to to the board. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And if there isn't anything else, we don't have any old business or any new business to report at this time. I'll just I just have one thing about old. Yes, ma'am. We had talked about um, the amenities for the buses and we talked about improving that. And I'd like to know, because one of those things were the, the sunshade, the coverings over the some of the bus stops and mm -hmm. the bus stops like on Abercorn that don't have anything there, no concrete, no anything. So where are we with that? Because Abercorn is a very highly used track. Yes, ma'am. And we had talked about getting shelters or at least getting concrete poured because Two of those bus stops sit on an anthill. Well, I do know that um, uh, Steve Boatwright, who's our director of maintenance, has contacted the city of Savannah because they've been very helpful in the past with pouring the concrete pad, the concrete pads that we place the shelters on. Sometimes, or some cases, have been for accessibility. We don't have any curb cuts or even sidewalks, so they're not accessible. So we are in the process of determining the first 20 bus stops that we can install amenities, whether it be uh, a bench or a bench and a shelter or a bench shelter and a trash can. Uh, so we are in the process of going through the list of top 20. And we base those top 20 bus stop locations on the number of people who board those bus stops or board at those bus stops. So we are currently going through that. Well, there are several bus stops on Abercorn where mothers are with their kids and they don't have a, a, a concrete pad at all and there's no sidewalk. So, you know, and I've been talking about those for a while because I see those mothers try to get those baby strollers in that grass and up the, you know, and up on the sidewalk and then walking in the street. So, I'm very interested in at least Abercorn because the traffic is so bad on Abercorn. Yes, ma'am. I and, agree. And, and, and that's what I was saying with some of those buses that you described with the grass and no sidewalks, they're not accessible currently. Right. They're not considered accessible. So they're not. We, right. So we are hoping to work in collaboration with the city of Savannah to make some improvements. Now we were supposed to contact some of the businesses, like the one that's in front of, there's a couple in front of the car dealerships to see if they wanted to sponsor a shelter. Did we do that? Um, I, I I can't say in an affirmative. I don't know. Um, I'll have to- Can we check? Get with, yes, ma'am. I will Thank get you. with Mr. Cooksey and his team and make sure that, that that's followed up on. Because if they want to donate a shelter, I think we should let them. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. We'll do everything we can to encourage that. I think we should do that. 
Put yes. their name on it and everything. Yes. Because there's several that are within, that are completely within bus, bus um, dist- businesses and some of the property out going, extending from where their business is, is not city property. So we might need to go through them anyway. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Thank you. And I've, I've, I've made a note to, uh, to follow up with you on that. Thank you. Thank you. So our, our next governance meeting will be on next Tuesday. Also, Sorry. also I'm, I'm going to be a pest and ask. That's all right. I just want to follow up with first smile, last smile. <laughs> Any info? Um, no, D- a Director Stone, but I promise you, you will get some information back on that this week. Brynn, did you have something you want to say? Yes, ma'am. I, I think that goes in line with the, the on-demand option. Um, as we've been internally uh, discussing how we can roll out a program, a pilot program, hopefully this fall uh, with on-demand service. We, we've included that first mile, last mile in that, that option. So it may be we um, could run from a residence to a bus stop um, or to a bus line um, in that, that on-demand service. So we're exploring all of those options. Uh, again, uh, like Ms. Raglan said, we're not quite ready to uh, present yet, but uh, we, we have been working on that for you. Okay, because I, I know will, other communities do it. Yes. yes. I will add, Director Stone, that, and as Bryn said, I didn't want to put too much out there because we're still exploring these options, but we are even looking at a partnership with, with Uber or Lyft for the first mile, last mile. Okay. We just, we, we, we're just we working on some things, but we didn't want to put too much information out there uh, until we are certain about what direction we're going to head into and then we'll make a report to the board i understand i just i've been seeking this information for a little while yes ma'am thank, thank you. you for your your patience and your indulgence <laughs> <laughs> okay so with that i want to remind you that uh, the governance meeting will be held on next tuesday may 18th and our regular board meeting will be held on uh, the following Tuesday, which is May 25th. And if you don't have, if either of you, Director Odell or Director Stone, if you don't have anything else for this, for us at this point, we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 1115. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Y'all have you. a great day. Thank you, you too.